Today we're doing lab five and we're going to look at inks, um, black inks and chromatography. Chrome coming from the word for color and then we're gonna um, get a um, set of data that is related to those colors. So this is a, a common technique that chemists use um, to separate mixtures. So it's a type of separation and um, if we can separate a mixture, then we can find out what's in the mixture. Um, we can also um, quantify how much of that thing is there. And so separations are a um, big category of um, activities that chemists do. So the one we're looking at today is chromatography. There's lots of different types of chromatography. Um, we're gonna do what's called paper chromatography. Um, but every type of chromatography has two different phases. It's got a stationary phase and a mobile phase. And essentially we use in chromatography those two phases to get the solutes um, to stick more to the stationary phase or to the mobile phase. So if I can sketch out for you um, the setup that you're gonna use in today's experiment, um, we're gonna have a beaker and in the bottom of that beaker, we're gonna put a solvent, and that solvent is what we would call the, solvent's gonna be what we call the mobile phase. Mobile as in it can move, like we used to call our phones mobile phones because they could move compared to a house phone. Um, so mobile phase will be here, and then we'll put into that a piece of paper, um, and that paper, is going to be what we call the stationary phase. Stationary as in it doesn't move. So on that paper then, we're gonna put the substances that we want to separate. So we're gonna put a couple of spots of ink. Um, and over time, if you can imagine that this is my solvent down here, um, just like a paper towel or a napkin would at home, that solvent is going to get soaked up the paper. And so we will watch that paper progressively get wet. As that solvent moves up, it's going to start to separate out these inks. So um, you might see, say, purple show up here and then a little bit of a red spot up here. So this blue ink might actually be made of a couple of different pigments. Um, maybe a pigment that doesn't move very much, you might just see a little bit of a blue smear, all right? Um, so this would be a good um, comparison between the two inks because you can tell them apart and that's a big thing we want in chromatography is different outcomes. Um, in this case, I would say that these inks over here, the ones on the left, um, they moved and so they are like the mobile phase because like dissolves like. Over here, these inks did not move, and so we would say that they are more like the stationary phase or the stain still phase. Um, so we will be able to differentiate between two inks and also make some inferences about, hey, that red must be very similar to the solvent's properties because it moved so much with the solvent. So if we go back to the lab, um, we're gonna be looking for that partitioning or separating between the stationary and the mobile phase. Um, as we work through today. Um, on the next page, you can see that your task is gonna be um, to figure out what the unknown ink is, and actually, because we're doing this remotely, you're gonna do three inks, so you'll figure out what ink A and B and C are. Um, here's the chemicals that you're gonna use. So these are going to be your solvents or your mobile phases here. Um, we'll have three black ink pens, which you'll see in the video later, and then here's some of the other equipment that was collected for you. Um, all of these compounds are organic compounds, so we would have a special waste container for them and we would be careful not to inhale them. Um, so you will see in the video um, that you're not gonna collaborate, but you will watch um, first, these first four um, steps will all be done at once for you. So you'll see six different beakers with six different solvents. And the six solvents that you will see tested will be methanol, hexane, acetone, propanol, butanol, and water. Pay close attention to what order those are in in the video, um, and then you'll be looking at results from that. So you'll see in the video that this um, 
is going to be the setup like I sketched for you earlier. We've got the solvent at the bottom, we've got the ink spots, and that solvent is going to move up, and you'll see kind of in a time lapse what happens to each of those inks. After we've done steps one through four, um, then we will pick a solvent that gives a good separation. In other words, makes the three inks look very different from each other. And that will bring us to the next page. So the next segment that you'll see in the videos um, will include an unknown ink. And again, there's gonna be three unknown inks. So at this point in the video, you'll see three different papers, one with unknown A, one with unknown B, and one with unknown C. So you'll see three spots plus an unknown spot. You'll observe that um, separation. You'll draw observations for one of them down here. So um, on this page here, your unknowns, you're gonna do all three. You're gonna do A, B, and C. Um, for these, just pick one solvent here, maybe one that's interesting. Pick a second solvent here. Pick a third solvent here. Not three, but one. So out of the six solvents, you'll draw three. Um, that'll be in steps one through four. And then chromatogram four for the unknown. Um, you will have three of them, um, but just pick one of the unknowns. So show A or B or C. Um, the way that we'll know that you match things up correctly will be when you go to write on the other side. Um, so for your results, you're gonna um, look at which solvent was used to give the best separation of the ink components. So that will be one of those six. And then here for the identity of the unknown ink, you don't need to write anything beyond A, B, and C. So you might say that A was the Sharpie, um, B was the Crazy Art, and C was maybe Crayola. So you just need to put the identity of the pen. You don't need to write anything beyond that. After that, you do need to ask a follow-up question. Um, so what would you be curious about? You've been doing a good job of these on your um, lab so far, so what would you try if you could do this again? And you might even play with this um, at home in your kitchen. Um, you don't have methanol around, but you could use some different alcohols or something. Um, and then lastly, you're gonna look at their chromatogram with the methanol mobile phase, and you're gonna answer which of the colored components of each ink you think were most polar. So that would be coming back to a picture like this. Um, if my blue solvent is polar, then whatever moves furthest with it would be most polar. So I would say for this ink that the red component is more like the mobile phase than the purple component. So say this blue was methanol, I would say the red is more like methanol than the purple. So you want to have that kind of mindset as you work on um, number three here. And then you will turn um, page 29 here and page 30 in at the end of the lab. So have fun watching and ask your instructors if you have any questions.